South Africa, Bolivia, Kazakhstan, Armenia, Mongolia and Bulgaria. This is the group four of the Head to Head Challenge. meet our first three contestants, South Africa, Bolivia and Kazakhstan. Are you girls ready? Yes! Let's start with South Africa. Since I was a little girl, I always had this deep desire to live up to the meaning of my name, Defender of Mankind. Good evening, South Africa. My name is Sasha Lee Willerfield. I'm 26 years old and I'm representing Johannesburg. And it's a mission and something I choose to live up to every single day. As the eldest of three children, I always considered myself the responsible one, and it's definitely served me well on my journey to Miss World. To take responsibility not only for myself, but for those around me, I believe that it is our duty to uplift others and bring out the best in them. I'm a product of South Africa, a country where hope unity and forgiveness is the backbone of our society, where we know that we are stronger in our diversity than we are apart. And I'm proud to represent the country that molded me into the woman that I am today. I live my life by these words and I'm grateful to live in South Africa, a country where we are free to live, love and be whoever we were born to be. Mahatma Gandhi once said, a man is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. As a little girl, I had a dream. A dream to one day be on the biggest stage in the world. And now I'm proud to say that I'm Sasha Lee Olafid and I'm going to be representing South Africa at Miss World 2019. So South Africa, you're a teacher as well, right? Yes. So what do you find is the most challenging thing about being a teacher? You know, the most challenging thing is actually being very much aware of the fact that the current system we have isn't really conducive to self-expression. It doesn't really celebrate the different types of intelligence we have. And I'm aware of STEM-based education and how important that is given the fourth industrial re revolution. But I think until such a time that we get to a place where the arts are celebrated as much as STEM-based education, are we doing our kids the greatest injustice? Because I feel like we're denying them a part of themselves. So I feel like all the art students can relate to this as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I can relate. I love art and I know it's very important for you to have them as a little kid and throughout your whole education. Um, is this related to your video with a purpose or what is it about? So for me, I think that the most important thing is for us to create these environments that foster creativity. It's not really related to my Beauty with a Purpose mm -hmm. project, but I think it's something to do with my purpose and something that I'm so very passionate about. I'm so passionate about kids. <laughs> well, that's lovely. And can you elaborate a little bit more about what your Beauty with a Purpose is really about? So my Beauty with a Purpose project it aims to liberate and celebrate women and men who have survived sexual assault. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel this is very important given the current crisis that we're in. Currently, every 26 seconds, this is a reality for some people. And as much as this is a reality in South Africa, mm -hmm. I'm aware that this is an issue that transcends borders. You know, there are many initiatives that are aimed at the physical nature of what sexual assault is and there just aren't many s involved in the emotional the emotional support and I think that that's so necessary right now that's so necessary right now so what we have our rape comfort pack aims to do two things firstly it it helps in making the jobs of these professionals much easier so it's there to assist in 
the process of taking that statement, it's there to give comfort. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. there are many kids who are affected in this, so it's something for them to hold on to, something for them to, something to bring them comfort, you yeah. know. And the second thing, to restore the dignity of these individuals. That I would say trumps anything. I want them to understand that it's not their fault. It's something that I wish I knew a lot sooner, being a survivor of sexual assault myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful right now because there's so much hope in this, because we are now part of a platform that's so meaningful with a legacy that's so far reaching and meaningful. And we now have the opportunity to build on that. We now have the opportunity to work towards something that's a lot better. Yeah, of course. I think it's such an important thing to think about the whole picture of mm -hmm. sexual assault because it affects during and many years after. I think yes. it's amazing what you're doing. Thank you, South Africa. Thank you. Now let's meet Bolivia. Hello, my name is Isiar Diaz. I'm 23 years old and I miss world Bolivia. I was born in Bolivia, but when I was four years, my family and I went to live to England. Coming back to London is so special for me. After England, we also lived in Spain and Brazil before coming back to Bolivia again. But it wasn't until I was 16 that I discovered my real passion, singing. I've been studying and working since then to achieve a big dream that I have, that is to be a successful singer. When I finished studying social communication in the university, the way I saw life changed. I realized that I didn't want to just exist. I wanted my life to have a deeper purpose. And I decided to use my talent as an instrument to help others. Because we are love. We are the change. Bolivia, how has living in so many countries affected you as a person? I think that living in so many countries is one of the most beautiful things that could have happened to me. Yes. I have a piece of each place in where I've lived in my heart. I am a mixture of all of them together and uh, I, I'm really thankful with life for having this opportunity of, be, of living in England, in Spain, in Brazil, in Bolivia and of being here, of course. And, uh, but I think the most important thing of this is that I learned to respect, to tolerate and to value diversity. Do you think it has helped you a lot here at Miss World? Yes, it, ha <laughs> it has helped me so much connecting with many of the girls because of the language I speak in three languages, so I connect with all of them and I help them also to communicate. But I was saying the thing about tolerating, respecting and valuing diversity, I think that the richness of this world is in our differences and it's yeah. through this diversity that we must join forces. No, oh, that's beautiful, and that's what Miss World does, join forces across the globe. Yes. And what about your Beauty with a Purpose? My Beauty with a Purpose, I have worked through many years with children, but now these last months, mm -hmm. uh, Bolivia has been suffering plenty of things, and one of those was a giant forest f fire. Yeah. It was very several. We lost 5.3 million of hectares, more than 1,600 species of animals, were threatened and it will take like 300 years to recover all we lost in flora and fauna so it was really a nightmare for us it took so many months to control the fires i went to the place when the fires were happening as a journalist and as a volunteer and i really was able to live the situation and it changed completely my life and i, I said i have to do something with this i need to help this big catastrophe because it was really, really several and we still need so, ma so much help. So my social project is called Sostenible, that means sustainable, because this area, I forgot to explain, this, the area that was affected is mm -hmm. called the Chiquitania and Amazon uh, region of Bolivia. Yeah. And my mom is from this place, so it really hurts me a lot. And now it's in ashes. So the project aims to use ashes mm -hmm. as a product to sell as a natural fertilizer. And the funds raised will go to this damaged local community to support the area. 
well, wow, I think that's going to sound, that sounds amazing. Thank you. I think you. to take something that probably hurts, like the ashes, a part yes. of your forest, but now they'll come back to the earth and heal you as well. Yes, we need so much help, and it's not just the local community, the flora and the fauna. So I think that we, there's a hope in the ashes that were left from the fires. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Olivia. Now it's time to get to know Kazakhstan. I am Madina Batik. I am proudly presenting my motherland to you, my Kazakhstan. I am studying at university with a degree in tourism, and I dream of telling the whole world about Kazakhstan. It is located in the heart of Eurasia. There are also some centuries-old mountains that welcome climbers and hikers from around the world. In my amazing country, there are ultra-modern cities, turbulent rivers, the Caspian Sea washing the shores of five countries, deep canyons, transparent lakes, green forests, hot desert sands and icy mountain peaks. Royal mounds, petroglyphs, artifacts of a nomadic civilization, dried up ancient seas and of course the traditional nomadic cuisine that is worth a try. This is what you are going to see in Kazakhstan. Many centuries ago, the Great Silk Road ran through our endless steppes. Fortified cities grow along the Silk Road. Great Eastern thinkers were born here. In the canyons of rivers, where the Huns and their great leader Attila used to wander, there are some great spots for rafting. My grandfather, Kashen Sadekov, was a well-known shepherd. The whole village trusted him with his cattle. It was in our steppes where nomads tamed the horse many centuries ago. I am well kept in the saddle, fond of horse riding and have already tested some horse riding roads. In just 20 years, a huge metropolis has grown from a one small town. This is the capital of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan. My motherland is vast and beautiful. I want you to see its beauty with your own eyes and to love Kazakhstan the way I love it. I know that you're very close to your family, especially your nephews, right? Yes. Can you tell us anything about them? Um, okay. Um, I have got uh, two nephews. Mm -hmm. um, their names are Amir and Aldiar. <laughs> Uh, he, um, first, Amir, he's three years old, uh -huh. and I think he's very uh, kind and very smart. Um, I came to pick him up from kindergarten, and, <laughs> and I bought him a Kinder Surprise. He divided it and gave it to, um, it to the uh, pretty little girl uh -huh. um, from the group. So sweet. Uh, I think she's his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Already? He's starting very early. <laughs> yes, I was Jill. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I love that you're close to your family. And can you tell us about your beauty with a purpose? Um, I'm volunteering in different spheres in my country. We help little children who were abandoned. Also, our organization helps uh, to pregnant women uh, who have no support from their families. We try to collect money, uh, we organize charity markets to collect money, and then we help um, two women. Um, I think uh, he, uh, it's not just ordinary charity, it's about humanity, love and compassion. I like to be volunteering. Well, thank you, Kazakhstan. These were your first three contestants, and remember to vote for your favorite on Mobster, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, the Ms. Wall website, MsWall.com. Let's welcome our next three contestants, Armenia, Mongolia, and Bulgaria. And we'll get to know first, Armenia. What you will see now, I see every day as I approach the mirror at the end of the day. I approach 
and throw off the mask that I scrupulously draw on my face every morning to hide what sets me apart and makes me different from most of the people. What forces them to gaze at me and carefully examine my every single spot. Thousands of glances and endless questions made me wear a mask. I have been in this image for the past three years already. The hardest was the first year when I had to accept the changes that occurred in my life and dramatically changed its course. It was difficult for me to realize and accept it, seeing the number of whitish patches daily increasing on my body. Vitiligo, this is the term given to this unique body ornament. Three years later, I fell in love with my new look and realized that this was the zest given to me regardless of my will, but as a gift, and it didn't even prevent me from being recognized as the most beautiful girl in my country. Thus, I am a girl with vitiligo, from Armenia. My name is Liana, I am 20 years old. I am studying at the Yerevan State University of Languages and Social Sciences, Faculty of Social Sciences and Service. I have loved painting since my childhood and have won many awards participating in various painting contests, but now I express my artistic talent not on paper as I used to do when I was a child, but decorating the dishes I prepare. I left musical school with a degree in guitar, then learned to play the piano and saxophone myself. And over the last two months, I learned to play the canon in order to represent Armenian music and Armenian musical instrument at the Miss World Talent Contest. I am very happy for the opportunity given to me, and although my state has sent me to the contest, and I express my deep gratitude to my people, nevertheless, I love every single person on earth, regardless of racial, ethnic, religious and other characteristics. Love and peace to the world. Well, Armenia, you talk about vitiligo, yeah. which is a skin condition, and it has caused you, I'm sure, some insecurities about yourself. How have you overcome them? To say about fear, I overcome fear by praying, because mm -hmm. I believe in faith, and it helps me think positive. In, and in any situation, I try to get some solutions uh, instead of panicking. And to talk about confidence, uh, Vitiligo is really made me feel so unconfident because the first year, during the whole first year, yes. overnight I saw another person in the mirror because, because the patches were growing and even the people in the street were gazing at me and asking me many, many questions and uh, even people sitting next to me in the bus. Uh, by seeing the patches on me, they just changed their seats because most of the people think that it's some infectious skin disease, yeah. but it's not. Vitiligo is just skin condition that makes you unique. And for me, the best decision was to participate in beauty pageant Miss Armenia uh, to prove to myself that I am beautiful. And now I am here with my vitiligo next to 130 most beautiful <laughs> girls around the world. And my message to the world, that uniqueness is, doesn't mean that you are not beautiful. Because uh, the beauty is not just a case that you wear. Beauty is inside of you. And if you are beautiful inside, so you are beautiful out. And also my message that anyone who has vitiligo should be accepted and liked by the public. And people should be most, more educated. And yes, they should fair. educate their children to not bully on dead children who has vitiligo so yeah that's... i think that's very true and you're one of the new icons that are like showing people that yeah. any skin condition like it's just that it doesn't affect your dignity or who you are as a person it's not disease yeah exactly <laughs> and tell me about your beauty with a purpose for a long time i was asking myself what can i do how can mm -hmm. i make my one voice heard and while I was thinking, I heard about foundation that helps orphanages, ch uh, families, soldiers, children, building schools, and etc. And it attended my attention. And now I'm the spokesperson and the face of that foundation. Also, by my Beauty with a Purpose video, I present one project which uh, intend to unite all 8 million Armenians that spread uh, around the world uh, around one project. 
And I believe that this project will not only unite all Armenians around the world, but it uh, also will attend the attention of the whole world. Because it's so hard for me when I'm going abroad and I'm telling that I'm from Armenia and most of the, the mm. people even don't know about my country. But we are one of the oldest nations and we have a huge history. And I hope that this project will help to my Armenia to become more recognizable in the world. Oh, I hope so. And you told me that your dress is traditional Armenian yeah, as well, it's right? Yeah, Armenian. Well, it's, I, it's Armenian desi designer, exactly. designer Nikolian. Well, it's beautiful as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you much, Armenia. Thank you, too. Now, let's meet Mongolia. The motherland of the great historians who sailed across the world on their horse hooves. Mongolia. The vastness of Mongolia and its mysterious culture recorded by many world explorers, including Marco Polo, who traveled along the Silk Road, which was then controlled by the Nams. My father is a descendant of the sacred culture of our forefathers, who is a beloved national wrestler of Mongolia. I am the eldest daughter of my family to praise his name in the world. I'm the metropolitan girl. Our city combines Mongolian heritage with modernity and it's flourishing every day. I love to be the witness of this ongoing historical change and I like to take photos and keep them in my collection. I think by better understanding ourselves, we become more able to understand and help others. As a medical doctor, Contributing my knowledge to increase welfare of others is my responsibility. For that reason, I have chosen to become a doctor believing that the lives of many will be saved and can gift them a long-lasting happy life. Let's create a world where everyone can have happy and healthy life. My name is Sujma Mandakh. I am an ordinary Mongolian girl who grew up listening to the lullabies in the beautiful melody of Merunkho. A girl who is riding with freedom in white steep grasslands. What a beautiful video. I feel like I was watching the trailer of a movie, don't you think? It was beautiful. And in your video, you said that your father belongs to a sacred cultural group. What is it about? Thank you very much. Mongolia has long history and rich with culture. Mm -hmm. Maybe the last nomad people live in the world. Yes. Um, national wrestling is a big part of our culture. My father is famous national wrestler in Mongolia. Wow. Do you wrestle? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for every doctor, her father is superhero. Yes. However, he sacrificed his dream for our family. Uh -huh. Now I'm uh, very happy to have this chance to fulfill his dream through Miss World. Oh, I know you're very close to your family now. And can you tell us about your beautiful <clears throat> with a purpose? I'm a medical doctor. As a mm -hmm. doctor, I want as many people to be happy and healthy as possible. Mongolia ranks number one at liver disease uh, rates in the world. Mm -hmm. I heard about an orphan girl who diagnosed with liver disease to live about two months. And she simply said, I want to live. The sentence really touched me a lot. So we did fundraising and I was in the operation and liver transplantation was successful after 16 hours of surgery. Well, thank you, Mongolia. Now we meet Bulgaria. Hello, I'm Margot Cooper and I represent Bulgaria at Miss World 2019. I am profoundly in love with my country, its breathtaking landscapes, rich history and culture, folk crafts and most importantly our warmest people. 
I am adventurous, fearless, and since the day one, I had the natural curiosity and passion for life. Which is why I hold a journalism degree. I also possess the strong interest in psychology, human nature, our motivations, our unlimited abilities, dreams, harmony and well-being. Having traveled to almost 50 countries, I learned that we all have similar problems, struggles, that we all share the same pain. All of these problems need a solution, and us, the young generation, we can't wait for the change, but we have to become the change that the world needs. To help others, you need to speak the language of kindness. Kindness doesn't cost you, but makes your life meaningful and bright. Let's light the world. Bulgaria, I love the way that you talk about helping others. Is that what um, inspired you to become a life coach? Uh, life, coach uh, life coaching is not a miracle and didn't come to my life in an easy way. Mm -hmm. I came through pain and through hard times and mm -hmm. especially this year was very difficult for me. I lost a friend, I was diagnosed with tumor and uh, all my life I was being told that I'm average and only after when I overcame this mm -hmm. I found a strength that I can guide people. I don't have any visible talent, I cannot sing <laughs> or dance, uh, but I have a talent to see talent in others and for me the most important thing is to help people to discover their potential and to reach new heights and I don't believe in the best version of yourself I believe that we are all already good enough for to live the life we want and to reach what we want and all of us we can find strengths inside of us to overcome anything possible oh, I think helping others to make them feel better about themselves and about the situations is a talent. You are very talented in that way. I don't sing dance or do any of those things either. <laughs> I wasn't very good at my talent round in my year. But you have a really good talent with people. And what is your beauty with a purpose about? My beauty with a purpose about adults and their mental health. Mm -hmm. And I call my project Invisible People of Bulgaria because mm -hmm. all the centers, they're so far away from cities and really no one cares about them. And when I visited them, I was devastated by their stories. Yeah. Most of them, they have families and friends mm -hmm. and no one ever come to visit them. They're so lonely, they want just to hug you and to have this connection and mental health is a basic need and my mom she worked as a nurse and mental uh, hospital for a long mm -hmm. time and since I was a child I knew that I need to make a step somewhere where no one would and um, I started with, uh, to visit these centers mm -hmm. and uh, they don't have even some basic stuff, uh, but also they have art therapy, what is uh, now uh, really, I'm happy that it works and helps people. And I came up with this idea of self-maintained charity project and hmm. uh, to use uh, the wow, that's beautiful. Uh, paintings uh -huh. of uh, people who live there and to make t-shirts and all the money goes directly to the centers. And my work was noticed by Red Cross and also a lot of organizations contacted me and I'm, I feel heartbroken because I um, traveled so many countries and I just realized how many problems we have in Bulgaria and I, I'm very happy to be here mm -hmm. at Miss World and to use this platform but I cannot wait to come back because people are waiting for me, they count on me. <laughs> And uh, I wake up now every morning with the feeling that I, I'm strong, I can change this world. And they're like your family now. Yes, yeah, so they're like my family. Oh. Congratulations, Bulgaria. So congratulations to all you ladies as well. 
This was the group four of the Head to Head Challenge. And remember to vote for all of them and your favorite in our all social media platforms, Mobster, Instagram, Facebook, and of course the Miss World website, MissWorld.com. See you next time with group five.